y'all don't mind, let's go back to a time when we really used to have church. We used to have a good time, praising the Lord, the spirit and in truth. I love them old church That old brother, song. pick up that old hymn book and Singing you knew exactly what he was going to say. Sisters got happy, folks start patting their feet, clapping their hands and all of a sudden, he break off in a song something like this. Oh, baby. All right, y'all have me Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Y'all know Jesus? We know Jesus. Let's check out Jesus. Watch the first distraction. There, uh, there were present at that season some that told the Galatians whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Uh, Pilate had taken uh, the blood of animals and martyrs and had mingled it together. And they were drinking that blood. Uh, they were literally drinking because the communion was being taught. And as we're being taught, we, we learned that Jesus said in uh, John chapter 6, around the 61st verse, that, uh, that whosoever eateth and drinketh of his flesh and drinketh of his, of his blood, uh, they had taken it. And that's what happens when you have ignorant people trying to study an intelligent Bible. Uh, because the Greeks and the Romans were ignorant of God's word, uh, a stumbling block to them. They had begun to do and practice things that were uh, uh, not copacetic and certainly not scriptural. So much so that some of the Galatians had begun to drink blood that were offered to idols as a type of community. And, 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 you, and you know us as church folk, we see somebody doing something doctrinally unsound, we lose our mind. Y'all say amen. Uh, once we see somebody worshiping God like we know they ought not be worshiping God, we can't even worship God anymore for trying to tell them how they're not worshiping God anymore. Now, I know how to get some water in here. How to get some, some kind of water up in here. Amen. And how to get a bottle of water, or warm water, cold water, something here. Amen. And how. But, but you know how church for God. Because, because it is in us as a survival mechanism from a psychological standpoint that when uh, we are called out on something, mm -hmm. we tend to defend ourselves by saying what somebody else is doing. Y'all say amen. amen. If I go up to Sister So and so and say, Sister So and so, you wrong about this? The first thing Sister So and so is going to tell me what she know I'm wrong about. And we'll spend all our time talking about who wronged and who did wrong and all that kind of stuff. And Jesus standing there just looking at both of us, just shaking his head, just saying, boy, boy, boy. Uh, but because guess what? It doesn't matter what Sister So and so is doing, it doesn't matter what Brother So and so is doing, it matters what God said to do. And if you understand this, this is the teaching of the text. Look at the text. The text says in verse number two, it says, and Jesus answered them. In other words, the argument was the Galatians are communing wrong. They are communing with blood offered to idols. They, they're not right. They, they don't do right. Yeah. Jesus looked down and answered them and said, man, I tell you, so what if they are doing wrong? Let me say that again. So what if they are the worst sinners on the face of the earth? So what if Brother Jesse is the worst and Brother Wu is the very worst sinner on the face of the earth? Mm -hmm. Except you repent. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let me say that again. Amen. So what if Brother Him is the worst on the face of the earth? Mm -hmm. Except you repent. Y'all not listening to me. Because yeah, y'all spend y'all time looking out of the That's why you're on the church bus to hell. You get you getting caught up in stuff that's not your business. But it's God's business. And God knows how to take care of his business. And he is putting the scriptures, if they were, let's look at the Bible. He said, this is verse number two. He says, suppose ye, so what, that these Galatians, what are they doing? Drinking what? Blood. Mixed with, mixed, it offered to who? Idols. So y'all with me? Y'all gonna make the make sure I'm take a long time. Now I gotta start up. Make sure y'all get this. Y'all been, been hearing this scripture, but y'all never, never knew what it was about. The argument that there's some Christians in Galatians who are drinking what? Blood, blood mixed to who? Mixed with blood, mixed to animal sacrifices, offered to who? To idols. Now, what do you think? What do you propose Jesus should have said? Oh, they won't get in. Oh, they're in trouble. They ain't right. Oh, I wouldn't go over there. I wouldn't go there. Oh, 
Oh, you know what? I'm going to call somebody and tell them what them Galatians are doing. Y'all come on. Y'all say it. Y'all say it. Tell you say it. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to call sister so-and-so. And I'm going to call brother so-and-so. And I'm going to let them know what they're over there drinking stuff off of the idols. And they're spending all their time correcting and policing and telling folks off and running their mouth. And Jesus looked at them and said, suppose ye that this is factual. Suppose ye that you're absolutely right. And, and, and that's okay. But guess what? Unless you get your stuff together, <laughs> unless you get your stuff together, you lying, maniacal, backstabbing, two-faced, ungodly, unspiritual, unholy, nasty, low-lying, mean-spirited, un... <laughs> unless you get your stuff together, you shall what? Likewise. I like he, he, he didn't say they were saved. That, that back before, he didn't say they were saved. He said, you shall likewise. Not only are they going on the church bus to hell, but you're going to go to hell worrying about the hell of what everybody else is doing. Yeah. And you ought to mind your own business and let God take care of his business. Y'all got to say amen. Y'all got to understand two verses. Because I got to understand two verses. Right. I, to understand two verses I get into my text. Okay. And so he says in uh, Luke 13, 3, now I tell you, it says you repent. Who, who you need to be worried about repenting this morning? Yeah. You be worried about yourself. Repent. Y'all got to say amen. Who, who, who business you need to be worried about? Your. Who, 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 who church you need to be worried about? Your. What work you need to be doing? God. You be doing your work. All right. So then Jesus said, Well, I see y'all with spiritual mental retarded. Be a mess my spiritual mental retarded. Because they're the spiritual mental retarded folk will sit up and talk about everybody else and their stuff be so regular. You wonder something wrong with them. They couldn't put three sons together to save their life. They don't have a good prayer life. They don't give. They're sitting there, they're coming to the house of God. They prepare themselves. And the collection plate, they just look at it and move their eyes. It's like God has forgotten when they commune. They ain't thinking about the cross. When it's time to sing, they're not singing. And the first thing they said, I know I'm saved. How do you know you're saved? <laughs> but, but remember, we don't mess with the retarded. When people are spiritually retarded, you look at them and say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you got to take care of your what? You got to take care of yourself. Okay, y'all, y'all, y'all found me. We might get out of here for a minute now. Okay. So Jesus looks at them. He said, they, they don't, they're small. They don't get it. Let me tell you a parable. There was, and we had verse, pick up the verse before now. Uh, 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 five, actually. Uh, now I tell you, except you what, you repent, you shall likewise perish. Yes. Now watch this, verse number six. Here's a parable. A certain man had a fig tree. He planted in his vineyard. Yes. He came and sought fruit thereon. Uh -huh. He found none. Yeah. Certain man had a fig tree. He planted in his garden. He came and sought fruit. He didn't find any. Jesus has a church. He planted it on his own. He's come, he sought fruit. And the church is not producing fruit. The church is not producing spiritual folk. Yes. Folks still hate each other in the church. Yes. Folks still have attendance problems in the church. Yes. Folks still have love problems in the church. Yes. Folks still are not giving God glory in the church. Yes. I've come by here some three years and, and I don't see any growth. In, and I know you're looking for numerical growth, but, but I'm looking for spiritual growth. Yes. When I look for spiritual growth, I don't see spiritual growth because y'all still talking about each other, still lying on each other, yes. still trying to tear each other down yes. in my name. I told you before and I'll tell you again that by this, by what, by this, if you have love one for another, all men will know that you are my disciple. But yes. you're so busy fighting, acting like little babies, there is no spiritual growth in the church. Yes. And I've been by here three times. Mm. Didn't find anything. Well, Lord, what's going to happen? He says, well, take that church, take the tree. And here's the background of the text. The background of the text is a call to repentance for Israel. And, and, and that in a three-year period of time is literal. We realize that Jesus was born. Mm -hmm. uh, he began his ministry around uh, 30 years of age. Yes. And he worked for how many years? Three years. In those three years, uh, he put forth and planted and began to see to build not any church, yes. but his church. So the text refers to three years as the three years of reign of Jesus beginning to build and plant the seed for the church. Yes. And he came in the three years. Stopped by in John chapter 11. Found out they still didn't believe in him. He started crying 
in verse number 25, the Bible says, and Jesus wept. Why did he weep? Because folk didn't believe in his ministry. Am I right about it? Yeah. Found him in over in Matthew chapter 23 and verse number 27. All the work and energy that his father had put into the preparation for Jesus to be on our other church. But his church, yeah. folks still didn't believe. How do you know? The Bible says, and it said in Matthew 23 and verse number 37, Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem, I, like a hen, would have put my wings around you, and I would have protected you. But you won't believe that I am the Son of God. Am I right about it? Ah, he's up to, he's past the fertilization. He's past the planting seeds. How long did he plant seeds? 2,100 years had passed uh, since God predicted and prophesied uh, in Genesis chapter 3 uh, that uh, he would bruise the head of the enemy. He's past uh, the kingdoms of men, uh, Daniel 2 and 44. Uh, for in the days of this kings uh, shall the God of heaven set up a new kingdom that shall never be destroyed nor left the other man's hand. What you mean? Uh, he's done and he's fertilizing. He's, he's pollinating. He's planting. He's setting the stage for Jesus to get here. Yeah. Jesus comes in Mary room and John starts shouting, saying Jesus over there and uh, Elizabeth, he's in Elizabeth, he's over in Mary. They're getting yeah. ready for the yeah. Son of God. Tell what I'm saying yeah. Yeah. Not just any church, but the Lord's church. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said in Isaiah chapter 9 to us, a child is given to us, a child is born, he shall be called, he shall be called the counselor, prince of peace, mighty God, the Holy Spirit, am I right about it? Yeah, he's passed all that, and now he's picked his 12 men, took them up to college, began to teach them himself. How do you know? Because Peter declared, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse number 19, he said, when us, we were up in the holy mountain. Uh, we heard a voice, was actually a voice, uh, which came down from heaven, a uh, more assuredly voice. Uh, and this we now know that no scripture is given to any private interpretation. Why do you know? Because Jesus taught us himself what he had us to do. Uh, but holy men moved as God gave them the spirit. Y'all ought to say amen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so a parable is pointing to not the fertilization of the church. It's not pointing to the coming of the church. It's not pointing to the watering of the church. The power is pointing to the ministry of Christ. Yeah. And Christ says, now that I've come and I've looked at the tree, I've noticed that the tree has been eating good. Mm -hmm. What are the words that the text for him? Go back to the Bible, back to Luke chapter 13. Watch this. The tree's been looking good. It's been eating good. The Bible says in verse number 7, then Ah, uh, 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 verse number seven. Then said he unto the dresser of this vineyard, Behold, these three years I've done what? I've come seeking what? Fruit. Fruit where? On the fig tree. tree. Then was, but, but guess what? Oh, uh, all, he, all he found were leaves. That's it. Are you a fruitful Christian? Or are you an excuseful leaf? When God comes back for the church, will it find fruitful Christians who have told their friends about the church of Christ, <coughs> who heard the gospel, obeyed the gospel, became a child of God, or will they find some fig leaves on the tree and no fruit? That's the question this morning in the text. I've come three years, and the only thing I found it's some fig leaves. The last time we read about fig leaves was in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 3. When God moved through the garden, and after they had eaten of that forbidden fruit, they covered themselves with fig leaves yes. to cover their sin. So that God wouldn't know that they knew that they were naked. Oh. But excuses are like Everybody have one. Yes. And when God saw the fig leaves, he knew that they'd eat <coughs> of that fig tree. Yeah. When God comes back, you can cover yourself with all the fig leaves you want to. I had to work on something. Well, I didn't like the preacher. I didn't like those folk at that church. I had to do this. I don't do that. But God says, I'm looking for fruit and not fig leaves. Yeah. Yeah. God can do something with fruit. He can feed folk with fruit. Yeah, but if they help folk with no fig leaves. Yeah. Yeah, all right, all right, all 
I know, I know it's hard for y'all. Yeah. Because, because you talk some feed leaf folk. What feed leaf folk look like? They come to church every Sunday, no visitors. They come to church, they have no Bible class, have no, no, they have no spiritual uh, submission to the Spirit of God. They have no prayer life. They go home, they go right back to doing what they were doing. They go through the motions, but in the whole course of the week, when God sent rain, they were drinking like they were going to produce some fruit. When God sent summer, they were eating good and smelling good. Walking around when the wind blew, they just stretched out and enjoyed the wind, but didn't produce no fruit. And God said, what I do with big league Christians, he said, you take that tree and you cut it down and you, why it doesn't even encompass the earth? Amen. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Church, this is what I'm asking God to do. I'm asking God to give us a year deadline. I'm asking, I'm saying that God came by Uptown Church of Christ. Yes. Found a bunch of fig leaf Christians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What were they doing? Well, they were arguing about what somebody else was doing. Yeah. They, well, what were they doing? Well, they were sitting around, but they ain't coming. What were they doing? They were lying and courting and everything else, but they weren't doing it in church work. Yeah. They had brought nobody to Christ. They were sitting around. They, they couldn't keep a building. They, they didn't walk in the power of God. They get paid and take their, their money and go do everything for the world. God 15 cents and ask God, don't you want you glad I gave you that? You ought to be glad I gave you a man robbed God? Yeah, they robbed God. Yes, yeah. And God has stopped by. He said, I cut the tree down. Huh. I cut it down. I run it out of that building. I shut it down. Yeah. Dress and said, Lord, one more year. Give us one more year to stop this petty behavior. Yeah. For deacons to act like deacons. To quit sitting around power tripping for Negroes that you know you're not anointed, know you don't have a calling, to sit yourself down and learn the word of God. Amen. Give us one more year. Amen. Every sister sitting in here to use her influence to help another sister. Mm -hmm. To be a guide and a leader to her children and inspire them to worship God in spirit and truth. God, don't kill us. Give us one more year. Amen. Give us one more year for every man that's standing here. To stop playing and be a man about the Lord's business. Yeah. To stand in the gap and support your minister and leadership and support one another and push each other forward in this war that we're going through. We'll be picked up but one life after another. Lord, give us one more year. Right. Give us one more year. But we'll stop producing fake, fake Christians right. that smile in your face and talk about you like a dog yeah. behind your back. Yeah. Yeah. Give us yeah. one more year, Lord, of folk who don't gossip. But spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can tell folk how no good somebody is. You ought to be able to tell folk how good Jesus is. Amen. Tell them to say amen. amen. Give us one more year to open the mouths of our young folk. Right. You heard how sound they sang? Mm -hmm. One more year would that come in and really praise God. Right. Some of them want more, more street stuff than they ever knew. More safe stuff. Mm -hmm. God said, I've stopped by. I looked at you young people. I kill all of you. I shut it down. I throw you to the dogs that you want to be with. I'm fed up. I've come back. People are depending on this tree to be a fruitful tree. Live souls are being lost. And I've stopped back three years in a row. And you're doing the same stupid stuff you were doing. You need to preach. Don't tell them, folks. We got one year. We got one more year. We got one year to grow up and act like we know something. Then God got revealed in his own way. That yes, you got one more year. Last Sunday we were preaching. Brother Hawker came down the aisle, gave his hand to me and his heart to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Left the nominationalism, made, became a member of the Lord's church. Mm -hmm. Now we can do what we've been doing and kill him off the church. Or we, 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 we can learn to be fruitful because it's not him to have the mandate. Right. We got we, we got one year. One more year. Yeah. I, I should have to call you and tell you to get on the phone for Bible class. I mean, what more can we do? We, we give you, you have to come. You just, you know, I should have a call and say, would you give? I should have a call and you say, are you going to attend? When we have a mature, fruitful church, you ought to beat me to the church house. There ought to be something yeah. fruit in you that love God so much. Can't nobody stop you from praising God. Yeah. God said, young people, old people alike, you got one year. Right. Well, I've been trying to stop drinking, you got one year. I've been trying to stop sex, you got one year. I've been trying to quit lying. You got one year. I've been trying to quit God. You got one year. Yeah. I've been trying to. You got one year. Yeah. I'm trying to learn to give God praise. You got one year. As a matter of fact, you got one minute to stand up right now and shout thank you, Jesus, like God has shown up, giving you one year. You got one minute to get up on your feet right now and shout thank you, Jesus, like God gave you one more year. Amen. 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 Praise God. This is our good. Because y'all behave yourself. Right. I'm not even going to preach the rest of this lesson. Praise.
is not that bad. But I got three points I'm just about to get into. But I think you get the point. We got one year. We need to live like we got one year. We got a mission. We don't have time to be worried about nobody else but our time church of Christ. Every person in your mind needs to be focused on one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one hope. Even as you're called into the one hope of your calling. Amen. Ephesians 4, verse 4. There's one God and one Father of all, above y'all and through y'all and in you all. We have to focus on the oneness with Christ and the Holy Spirit. And when we come to the power of the Holy Spirit, God will make us a fruitful place. We'll grow in leaps and bounds, but the playtime is over. When the devil tries to help you look fun and look crazy, you say the devil's lying. Raise your hand and shout, thank you, Jesus, anyway. Every now and again, I, I, I make people run from me at work. Sometimes I'm walking around, I'm going to ask for a bathroom at my job. And I know this. They make, they make sure I know it. And every now and then, I just shout, thank you, Jesus. And when I see the doors closed, blah, 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 they just start moving. Because at the name of Jesus, oh yeah, every, every knee got the back. Every yeah. head got the back. And you ought to just shout, thank you, Jesus. But I'm telling you, you've come into the power of this text and realize you have one more year. In this text, he was referring to the day of Pentecost. He was saying to them that it has been three years in my ministry, and we got one more year. In that year, the Holy Spirit is going to follow. You're going to be saved the Lord. You have one more year to stop playing with the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Work with the Spirit. What were you asked to be this morning? What were you asked to be? Been wrestling with stuff for a long time. Some of them since a child. Some of you hadn't praised God with all your heart since you was a child. You got one of you to come in here and sit down and block out everything and just give God glory because His word be praying. God said, if you don't do it, if you don't do it, He said, cut the tree out. Mm -hmm. Why is it even on the earth? Why have a church that can't save nobody? Why have a person who can't teach nobody? What in the world am I blessing you for? You enjoyed my sunlight. You enjoyed the rain. You enjoyed the sun. You saw. You enjoyed everything I give for a tree to grow. And the only thing you do is produce excuse after excuse after excuse to hell with you. Amen. Amen. We got one year. What are we going to do with our town? What are you going to do with our town? Let's go build this church. Let's go build. The devil's alive. And every fake church of Christ out there, every, we don't have time to fool with them. They're going to hell in the church because you can't treat the Lord's church like you've done this church. And they're not happy with it. All we got to do is stick with the plan. Stick with the plan. Let's build a church. You tell your friends, your mother, your brother, you tell everybody, we got to get uptown. We're learning to be spiritual, and we got a one year mandate. And we're going to spend every time we get a chance to worship. Like we got how long? One year. One year. You got one year. You've heard the word of God. The Bible says, so that faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10, 17. Do you believe what you've heard? Mark 16 and 16. He that believe that is baptized shall be saved. He that believe not shall be damned. Yeah. Repent of your sin. Right here in the text. Luke 13 and 3. Don't worry about nobody else. Don't worry about it. If the Holy Spirit push you to be baptized, you get up and be baptized. What about my mom? They're not church of Christ. Now worry about the, you, you, except you repent. What about my friend? Except you repent. What about the world? Well, except you repent. You shall likewise. He tells you what's going to happen. You shall likewise perish. And so we're encouraging every man, boy, and girl here that's not right with God to get right. Amen. You got one more year to sit back there and say, I don't know what the spirit is. You got one more year to sit back there. Nobody ever talk. You got one more year. Whatever excuse you got, you got one more year. Don't you feel, don't you feel a disconnect from God right now? Don't you know that as a child of God, you're a powerful person? No weapon formed against you should be able to prosper. Yeah. Don't you know God never tends for you to be broke or hurt? Don't you know God don't put a Christian in bondage the enemy do? Don't you know that the hell and the misery you feel it is because you got a piss poor attitude toward the Holy Spirit and an attitude toward God? You have a rebellious spirit. That's why you living rough and living hard and living rumbling and tumbling and life is whooping your butt every chance to get because God said you got one more year and you just not getting it. I don't know about you, but I'm going to take all I got <laughs> in this year to do the work of the Lord. And I'm asking you to join me. Matthew 10, 32, confess him and squeeze him all the time. Put him all in baptism. You're baptized by the word baptismo. Baptisma is the word of God being baptized. That's what's been put on you this morning. And then the baptiz baptizo is the one underneath the physical water. And being baptized, not to just in the church. There's fertilization, one just in the church. 
It was for the church of Christ. Yeah. And we find it all throughout the scriptures. We pleaded in heaven's waiting, mercy's waiting when you come. When the son is the same, when you come right now, give me your hand, God your heart. You understand the son of the picture?